اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وافضل الصلاه واتم التسليم على سيدنا محمد وعلى اهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين اللهم صل على محمد we have this every night when you first do salawat you have to do it as loud as you can صلوا على محمد وال محمد السلام عليك يا رسول الله السلام عليك يا حبيب الله السلام عليك يا خيرة خلق الله ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته السلام عليك يا أمير المؤمنين علي بن أبي طالب ورحمة الله وبركاته السلام عليك يا فاطمة الزهراء سيدة نساء العالمين ورحمة الله وبركاته السلام على الحسن والحسين سيدي شباب اهل الجنه ورحمه الله تعالى وبركاته السلام على الحسين وعلى علي بن الحسين وعلى اولاد الحسين وعلى اصحاب الحسين ورحمه الله وبركاته so like yesterday we want to do the ziyara together if everyone inshallah memorizes this ziyara the ziyara or when we do Assalam uh, to Abu Abdullah Al Hussein and his son and his uh, family and friends, yes, and companions, right? So together, inshallah. Assalamu ala Al Hussein wa ala Ali ibn Al Hussein wa ala awlad Al Hussein. وعلى أصحاب الحسين جميعا ورحمة الله وبركاته السلام على التسعة المعصومين من ذرية الحسين ورحمة الله وبركاته صل على محمد وآل محمد السلام عليكم my dear sisters my dear brothers in Islam ورحمة الله وبركاته you have to, it's wajib for you to reply to the salam. Okay, so uh, I'll state whoever's new today, welcome. Uh, for those of you who have been here already last two nights, you'll know that we have two rules. Can someone remind me of the two rules? Yes. Yeah, go on. Yes, no judgment, yes, and? No, 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 no mobile phones. Don't, don't play around with your phone unless you're recording or you're writing some notes. But don't go on chatting in some social media malarkey, yeah? This is not social media time. Just try to relax, yeah? This is a relaxing time. I hope no one's been forced. Has anyone been forced to come today? One person has been, there's always one person has always been forced. But usually people are forced, don't say that they've been forced because they're obviously embarrassed. But inshallah, no one's been forced to come today, right? You're all here and you're, uh, you've had free will and you've taken that decision to come, right? You've taken that decision to come because you want to learn more because these are the majalis of Abu Abdullah al Hussein, and the environment is amazing, it's beautiful. And by the way, no yawning as well, yeah? So no yawning. I know you haven't had enough sleep, but... Uh, uh, watching probably football. Okay, so no mobile phones and don't judge anyone. Just be free. Yeah, open your heart. Be free. Don't judge anyone who says whatever. You can say whatever you want. But of course, please raise your hands if you want to say something. All right, so uh, we talked about uh, two nights ago. We talked about why is it important for me uh, to follow Imam al Hussein alayhi salam, we talked about the Yazid inside us. Does that, do you guys remember? Those who were here, the Yazid, everyone has a Yazid inside them, right? And we gotta diminish the Yazid and take, get rid of him, right? The Yazid inside us. And then yesterday, what did we talk about yesterday? Yes. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, then what's the point of prayer if I can't see God? It's all about seeing God, isn't it? And I asked the question, Does anyone, has anyone seen God? Everyone said no. I, at the end, everyone said yes. 
because everyone saw Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, yeah? Uh, the videos are on YouTube, it's been recorded for anyone who hasn't really listened to them, okay? You can go and listen to them. Today, inshallah, my dear sisters and brothers, we will be talking about hijab. It's really interesting, right? The title says, why can't men wear, men wear hijab too? And there is much larger women than men. You guys are not interested about hijab, are you, right? So, um, of course, because hijab is always talked about, we have our teenagers who say, why do, you know, mostly, uh, of course, the, the sisters, the girls, they say, why do I need to wear hijab? Okay, that's the question, why do I need to wear hijab? So today we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about, we're going to have a nice conversation about why is it important for us to wear hijab? So, when I say the word hijab, what is the first thing that comes into your mind? I need you to put your hand up first. What's the first thing that comes into your mind? I want to hear more from the sisters as well, because not a lot of them. Yes? Uh, your hair being covered. Yeah, so hair being covered. So, the first thing comes is hair, yeah? That's the first thing you... Yes? So a covering of the body, so, yeah, so we, we, one word comes is a body. Next, yes. A veil between men and women. A veil between men and women, a veil. Is that how you spell veil? How do you spell veil? V-E-I-L. Okay. See, I'm just testing you. Uh, what, uh, what else, Adam? Modesty. Modesty, that's a very good one. Modesty. How do you spell modesty? Is that how you spell modesty? E S T Y? Yeah. You mean M O D E S T Y? Um, so, modesty, hair, body, veil. Anyone from the sisters' side? What is it that comes into your mind when I say hijab? The first thing that comes into your mind? It's a burden. Should we write burden? Yes? Burden? What else? It's a chore, it's too much, I don't like it. Come on. You don't wear hijab. Anyone else? Yes. Balig? Taklif, okay. Taklif, balig. So we've got hair, body, veil, modesty, burden, taklif. Really interesting stuff. Although, although, I'm pretty sure you guys have much more to say, but you're a bit embarrassed to talk, which is okay, that's all right, no problem. Right, so hijab is, yes, it's a veil, it could be a burden, Uh, you cover your hair, you cover your body. So I want you to understand, does anyone know, in the Quran, has Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned the word hijab? I'm looking at you guys. T-A-L-K, man. See, I know how to spell. (laughs) Yalla. Anyone knows a verse in the Quran? You just really need to read. Yeah? You just need to read. In the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what I'm about to tell you might shock you. Yeah? But actually... This stuff that you are wearing, the veil, the, uh, the hijab, is actually, the, the word is incorrect. Someone came up with it many, many, many years ago, right? And then we all stuck with this word hijab. But it actually doesn't describe what you guys have described, as in the meaning of hijab. Because when we look at the Quran and in Arabic language, when we look at the Quran, this is in Surat Maryam, verse 19, 17. It says, فَاتَّخَذَتْ مِن دُونِهِمْ What? Hijaba. فَاتَّخَذَتْ مِن دُونِهِمْ حِجَابًا فَأَرْسَلْنَا إِلَيْهَا رُوحَنَا فَتَمَثَّلَ لَهَا بَشَرًا سَوِيًّا By the way, you guys, not you, but you guys, you should really make it a goal to memorize Surah Maryam. It's a beautiful verse, a beautiful chapter. 
the Quran, memorize it. It's a, honestly, it, it's, it's, it's written in a poetic way, okay? And it, it's a beautiful chapter. So it says, she screened herself off from them. Screened herself off from them. Hijab is like a screen. So if I was too cruel, right? And if I was to put a divider right here, I'm getting close to you, don't be nervous, right? If I was to put a divider right here, what is that divider called in Arabic? Hijab. That's called hijab, right? That's called hijab. Now, the stuff that you are wearing is not a divider. It's not a screening off from something. Maryam alayhi salam, she put a divider, like a metaphorical divider between herself and the people outside, right? So she puts a divider. What you guys, when you wear the hijab, that's not a divider, is it? It's actually what? It's called, anyone knows what it's actually called? Anyone? Yes. Khimar. you close. It's called a sitr. In the Arabic language, what you guys are wearing is called sitr. Yes? Sitr, because sitr is the, the word that actually means a veil. Means that you to cover. Sitr is to cover. And this is what you're doing, right? You're using a cloth to cover, right? Cover your beautification, men and women, okay? So this is just for your information. Actually, hijab is a word that is incorrect, but we're gonna continue using it because it's not really a big deal. But I just wanted you guys, for your information. Yes? I think we need a salawat. So, when we look at the Quran, the Holy Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, believe it or not, remember what we're talking about here, we're talking about hijab for you guys, yeah? When we talk about hijab, interestingly, no one talked about hijab for men. Everyone had their mind thinking about that hijab that all our uh, beautiful sisters are wearing, right? You put that veil on your head to cover your hair and body. Isn't that what everyone thinks about? But actually, hijab, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he starts talking about hijab, and remember, he doesn't word, mention the word, word hijab, but for clarification, I gotta continue using it. The word that he starts talking about hijab, directing his command to our guys, you guys, and including me. Yeah? Then he moves into women. So basically, he is saying, these guys, they wear hijab too, right? He's talking about men wearing hijab. What does he say in chapter 24, verse 30, right? I want you to read the Quran. I could have just not mentioned the Quran, but it's important for you to read the Quran. And you guys, I'm sure you know how to read the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, first he says, قُلْ. What is قُلْ? What does قُلْ mean? Not you. What does قُلْ mean? Say. 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 To who? Who can read this for me? قُلْ. Lil Mu'minina. What is the difference between Mu'minina and Mu'minat? Men and women, yeah. So it's mu'mineen is to males and mu'minat is to females. So the first verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks to men. He's addressing men. He says, oh men, wake up. قُلْ لِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ يَغُضُّ مِنْ أَبْصَارِهِمْ What does يَغُضُّ مِنْ أَبْصَارِهِمْ mean? It's a difficult question, but maybe someone out there will know. يَغُضُّ مِنْ أَبْصَارِهِمْ means you, they must do what? Lower their gaze. Do you know what lower your gaze means? Huh? What does lower the gaze mean? Look down, yeah. يَغُضُّ مِنْ أَبْصَارِهِمْ وَيَحْفَظُوا فُرُوجَهُمْ And you must protect your private parts, right? 
And then it continues, it says, ذَلِكَ أَسْكَى لَهُمْ This is good for their purity. Why? What does purity mean? It means that your heart has to be clean. Right? It's good for your heart. Remember yesterday we talked about the heart? Yeah? To see God, you need your heart to be clean. And for you to be clean in terms of your heart, you have to wear the hijab. How do you wear the hijab? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says you must lower your gaze. When I say wear, I mean metaphorically wear. Yes? Part of hijab, my dear brothers and sisters, part of the sitter isn't just about wearing that cloth. It's also in terms of your mannerism, in terms of lowering your gaze. This is also part of hijab. Yeah? So let's not just quickly jump into, you know, when someone says, this person is not wearing hijab, and then you, th you think, well, wait a second. Okay, they're not wearing that, that uh, piece of cloth on their head, but they've got really good manners. They've also, uh, you know, they, they lower their gaze when they see the opposite gender and stuff. So it's not totally they, they don't, haven't worn the hijab, right? Yes, maybe the cloth they haven't, but there are some other aspects of hijab that they've fulfilled. So let's not judge these guys, yeah? So hijab isn't just means you put the cloth on your head. Do you get it? Yes? If you get it, say salawat. <laughs> not good enough. I got to explain that again. No, you didn't, you didn't get it. Did you get it or not? All right, one person got it. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, okay, this is for men. All right, men, you've got to do what? You've got to lower your gaze. That's part of hijab. You also got to do what? You got to cover your private parts. That's part of hijab, right? It's haram to reveal your private parts. Then he moves into the women and he says, وَقُلْ لِلْمُؤْمِنَاتِ So what I've done is I've labeled exactly the same words, but in a address to females in the same color. So the yellow is exactly the same. مُؤْمِنِينَ مُؤْمِنَاتِ يَغُضُّ يَغْضُضْنَ So he also says for the uh, females, he also says what you need to do is you need to lower your gaze. He also says for females, when you see males, right, you must lo lower your gaze. Now we'll explain that further, right? For you guys, for mostly teenagers, you've got to understand that for you to uh, purify your heart, looking at the opposite gender with uh, some uh, lust or pleasure is not good for your heart. It's not good for your uh, purity of your heart. Of course, when inshallah you want to get married in the future, you can get to know them, you sit down and talk to them and you can see them. But that's the future. But sitting down and chatting and having jokes and things like that with the opposite gender is not good for your heart. So Islam says, Allah says, it's not just because he wants you to not really talk to them. No, it's because he says, I know that this will cause impurity in your heart you've got to try to avoid doing such things that's part of hijab sitting down and mingling and talking and joking and things like that that means you know you haven't worn your hijab properly I'm talking about men here yeah and women remember i'm still talking about men and women everything i've said so far is all men and women yeah hijab is the concept of hijab is the same for men and women, the concept. But then when we come to practicality, it's not, uh, the, in terms of what you wear, yes, it starts to differ, naturally, because women are different than men, right? But the concept of hijab, do you guys understand? Are you awake? Are you in this world? Yes? yes? The concept of hijab is the same for men and women. Take that. If you want to go to sleep, uh, you can do so after this sentence. The concept of hijab is the same for men and women. But the, in terms of the application of hijab, because women are different to men, in terms of their physique, the application is different. 
But what, am I, what do I mean by concept? What I mean by concept is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, you must lower your gaze. This is also in English called the social hijab. Have anyone heard of the social hijab? In society, you've got to you know, not mingle between men. and It's okay to talk to them, but don't make sure there isn't that particular space where you just joke around and it's not good for your heart. You want to do it? It's not good for your heart. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's a very good question. You can be friends. I'm not saying you can't be friends, but it's important that you don't you don't uh, re reach a, a, a space where you you uh, you know talk to them in a way that is very jokey, in a way that uh, you might be even when you grow up, you know, you might be uh, attracted to them and things like that. The reason is, as I said. It's all about purity of the heart. Because once it, get, it reaches that particular stage, a stage of, uh, of joking around and mingling and talking to each other and, and, and things like that, it can take, we know that it can take, it can go into a different level, right? So what we need to do is try to avoid that. And we must lower our gaze. Yeah, go on. I didn't say you can't talk to women. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I said avoid. What I did say, what I said is try to avoid that because it's not good for the purity of your heart. If you keep on practicing this particular uh, uh, style of always mingling and joking and talking around, right, it will affect the purity of your heart. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created the man and the woman, right, so that they can get together in a formal relationship called marriage. So inshallah, when you are ready, you absolutely, Islam says, go and find a wife. Or the wife can go on, or the wife, or the woman can find a husband. That's absolutely fine. You can go and see women. You can obviously go and talk to them and try to find out if, they, if, if you two are, are compatible with each other. You, you know, you get to know them. That's absolutely fine. But the intention is important. What is your intention? The intention is it for me to try to just be friends and, and, uh, and try to mingle and get to know them and, and you know, become jokey and I go out with you, go out with them. It's not good for your heart. This is what Allah says. It's, it's, uh, you can doubt that, but practicality in the terms of practical sense, Allah says it's not good for your heart. It's not good for your purity of the heart. But when you reach a stage, when you want to take this further, Right? And you want to get married, or the, the, the girl, once she wants to get married, then finding someone, talking to them, and things like that, then that is, of course, uh, there are certain regulations, but of course that can be last question, because I need to move on. How do you measure maturity? You can't, you can't open it up and say, okay, only the mature guys and the mature girls, you can sit down and talk to each other and mingle and joke, right? But then only the, the non-mature guys, because everyone here, if I was to ask a question, everyone will say I'm mature. No one will here come and say, well, I'm, I'm pretty immature, you know. I'm pretty immature, right? No one's going to come and say that. I don't know why I put a posh uh, English accent there, right? We can talk after, yeah? We can talk after. So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَقُلْ لِلْمُؤْمِنَاتِ يَغْضُضْنَ مِنْ أَبْصَارِهِنْ Again, you lower your gaze, right? وَيَحْفَظْنَ فُرُوجَهُنْ And also cover their private part. So, we talked about lower, lowering the gaze. So, what is the purpose of hijab? Remember, I'm still talking about men and women, right? We're still talking about men and women, right? What is the purpose of hijab? Can someone tell me? I want to hear from you guys. Because you guys are the, you know, supposedly, um, you know, why I say supposedly is that what the community thinks that you are the main guys who, who wear the hijab and things. But the men also wear hijab. But what is the purpose of hijab? Tell me. Yes. Covering your hair. So is that the purpose of hijab? So the purpose of hijab is to cover the hair? I'm asking, you could be right, you could be right, yeah? 
Fine, cover the hair, yes. Being modest. Being modest, yeah. Being modest, covering hair. Anything else? From this side? So you guys have no idea why you're wearing hijab, yes. So you, you can't talk in your, with your mouth on your, with your hand on your mouth. Show respect, very nice. Show respect for yourself and your religion, very beautiful. I'm sure you guys know. I'm not sure why you're here, in fact. I'm sure you guys know. All right, so let's go through them. So, hijab, my dear brothers and sisters, again, this is for brothers, you understand, yeah? You guys wear hijab, you gotta lower your gaze, you cover your private part, and we're gonna go into a slightly more details, if I have time, into the hijab of more about men. Right? Uh, barrier to sins. Al-hijab is a barrier to sin. When you lower your gaze, when you cover yourself, right? It is, yes, a cloth. It might be something very uh, simplistic for you. It might be something trivial, something like, yeah, whatever, it's just a cloth. But it actually, it's a metaphorical way of saying, I'm blocking all sins from my heart. Remember, you are covering your heart, you know, it's a cloth, right? So in the Quran it says that women should cover, right? So it, it's covering your heart, which is right here, yeah? It covers your heart from all the sins. It's a protection, yeah? You, you, you wear it with identity, you wear it with absolute uh, pride. And I say that with caution, right? So road is closed. It's absolutely closed for any sins to enter your heart when you are wearing a hijab. Anyone got a question about that? It also is the beauty of dressing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Remember, you are, you're not dressing for anyone. You're just dressing for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When, again, uh, the, the, when you cover yourself, when you cover your head, etc., it is you are dressing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves to see his servants wear the hijab so that they can purify their heart and protect their heart from sins, right? And also is an identity. You know, sometimes a cloth, uh, a flag, you know, the Americans and the British, right? And, and not British, but mainly the Americans, a lot of countries, they take their flag very seriously. You know, is it okay for me to take like a flag of United Kingdom and then step on it? They say, no, hey, what are you doing here? This is offensive, isn't it? If I was to take a, if the flag of United Kingdom, right, of Britain, I put it on the floor and I step on it. They say, oh, that's quite offensive. Don't do that. But I say, hey, wait a second. That's just a cloth, man. It's just a cloth. Chill. Right? It's just a cloth. But no, they say, no, it's not just a cloth. It's an identity. This flag, yes, is made of just nothing, but actually gives us an identity. For you guys, it's the same. When you cover, right? When you cover, it is your identity. It's giving you an identity. It's not just a cloth. Don't take it as just a cloth, but it actually shapes who you are, who you actually are. And you are a Muslim individual, right? Who has devoted themselves for Allah, for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Any questions on that? So why do we wear hijab? Why do you wear hijab rather? Right? Um, and there, there are lots of quotes. But what I want to do now is I just want to talk about the difference between men and women hijab. Okay? Because I've got a few minutes left. The difference between men and women hijab. Now, we've talked about hijab. We talked about hijab is a veil. We talked about hijab is a lowering your gaze. We talked about hijab is an identity. Right? We talked about hijab is covering your private parts. This is all the same for men and women. Is that correct or incorrect? Yes? Now we come into slight detail. So we've taken that concept of hijab. It's the same for men and women. They both wear hijab. Yes? But now let's go into a bit more details. Now, what Islam says is that women must cover their hair when they wear hijab. The men... They don't cover their hair when they wear hijab. Correct or incorrect? I can't see any men wearing hijab on their head. On their head? No. That's good, right? 
But I can see everyone here wearing. There is a difference between men and women, isn't there? In terms of beautification, there is a difference. Remember what we're talking about. We're talking about purity of the heart, aren't we? Hijab, the purpose of hijab is the purity of the heart. We're protecting our heart from any sins, right? Now, when you are, when you are a woman, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created you as more beautiful than men. Does anyone doubt that? I don't think anyone doubts that, right? Women, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created them more beautiful than men. But that comes with responsibility. Yes, men also have certain responsibilities. We'll talk about them. But women has, have responsibility as in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you a certain feature. A certain feature that has, he's not given the men. He's given the men a bit of more strength than women. I'm not being you know, gender biased here. This is true that men are more uh, you know, stronger in terms of their physique than women. Correct? That's why in construction you see more men than women. Right? Because they, you got to go up the, the stairs and come down and up there, you know, you know work in, in much, much more, uh, the environment is much more, uh, needs much more strength. Right? So men, they tend to do what? They are more stronger than women, so, but they have more responsibility than women in terms of that particular department. So women, they, they are more beautiful than men. So therefore Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in that particular concept, the concept of hijab, you've got to cover your beauty so that the opposite gender does not fall into prey, does not fall into the, the idea that they need, uh, so that they can, you can protect your heart and you can protect the man's heart. Yes? That is... What Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to do so that you can develop as a person. It's not just, it's not a burden, right? It's not a, such a thing as a burden. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to protect you. Now, in terms of covering the hair and covering the body, whatever is uh, attractive. But what's important, Allah is saying, you show your beauty to this person that you will consider a spouse, your husband. Absolutely, I've created this beauty for you, but I've got to, I've, got to, I've got to make sure that you preserve this beauty to someone else. This special someone else that you will get to marry one day. All right? You preserve that beauty to them. But you don't show your beauty to everyone because that will affect your heart. Your beauty is only specifically exclusive to your husband. Right? And that has a meaning. I know you guys might not appreciate that, or you might think, oh, he's chatting gobbledygook, right? But once, inshallah, you, go, you, you, you uh, become older and you get married, you will appreciate this, that the reason why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made me to wear the hijab so I can preserve my beauty to my husband, you can see it in your heart later on, the purity of your heart. Now, we come to the men. You guys think it's all easy, huh? Says who? Because we said the first thing is lower the gaze, wear private parts. But also importantly, you must try to avoid, right, revealing, uh, you know, being topless. You know, a lot of you know, men try to go on the beach and they try to be topless and say, yeah, you know, I can go and I don't wear hijab and go in the, you know, swimming and things like that, Baba, wait, wait. Is that, should that be the, the, the way that we dress in front of others? Now, yes, certain ulama say it is it's not right for, for a man to reveal, right? And others say, no, it's okay. But I don't want to go into that. But what I will say this to you, right, is you should seriously, seriously reconsider the time when you come and think about removing your shirt, and becoming topless in front of everyone. Because again, it goes back to the issue of actually protecting your heart from all the sins. But what is your intention of doing that? If your intention is to show off, like Mo Salah, who I love so much, but I don't like it when he takes off his shirt and shows 
his six pack, because I get jealous. I have a one pack. I don't have six packs, right? What are you laughing for, right? Um, so, uh, so therefore, he does that. I don't like it as a as a Muslim person, as a respectable person. It's not nice. He does that, right? What, what's the intention? Why is he doing that? Is it is it to show off to people? Look, you know, I've got six pack. I'm, you know, things like that, or or or, or, or something else, right? So therefore, it's important for you guys, I will seriously, seriously reconsider taking your shirt off, right, when you're in front of other people, right? It's uh, obviously definitely reconsider if it's right in front of women, because that does not, in my opinion, that does not show the dignity and the, 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 the respect that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created in the man, yes? And for me, I think it's part of your hijab. You got to try to protect yourself. Try to protect yourself. Again, this is a, a piece of uh, a cloth that is protecting your heart from uh, any diseases. And of course, if uh, the opposite gender find that attractive, then that's problematic, isn't it? Right? And of course, for the opposite gender, it is impermissible. Again, we said lower the gaze. If you see someone who is topless, you must lower your gaze. As well as the men, you must lower your gaze. Lowering the gaze is very, very important. So, in that particular department, because of the beautification of women, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, I want you to cover your head. And by the way, I've done a study on this. This is not a Muslim study. I've found, I found they've done big research. And they found that 88% of men find that hair is the number one attractive thing in women. So they have asked, what is the thing that is attractive in women? They said their hair, right? So that's the main thing. So that is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, I know your hair is attractive, so I want you to protect it and preserve it for the, uh, the special one you know, inshallah, that you will get married to. Okay? So I think we're, we've, um, we're running out of time. What I will do is skip. So this one, someone said here, it brings me closer to Allah and helps me. Someone, I did my uh, survey and, you know, some women did express uh, why they wear hijab. So she said here, it brings me closer to Allah and helps me deal with my own inner struggles. Right? Someone said, I love my hijab and choose to wear it, although I was asked not to wear it when I converted. She converted from Islam, uh, from something else to Islam. I would rather leave Australia than remove my hijab. You know, she lives in Australia. So she's so passionate about, um, about that. Um, so, and I wanted just finally, one person here, she said, I wasn't a hijabi before. I don't like that word, a hijabi. I was struck with the fact that if we weep over Zainab alayhi salam and Zahra alayhi salam cause, cause yani because, if you guys don't know, uh, of the calamities they faced, then we should also know the reason. And by the light of Allah, it's been four years of me wearing hijab. So because of Zainab alayhi salam and what she struggled and Zahra alayhi salam of how they struggled, you know, by also wearing the hijab, they, she found that they are her role model. So she said, I must follow that particular path, the path of Zahra alayhi salam and Zainab alayhi salam. And, and there are lots of other comments as well. So in conclusion, I don't have uh, time to go through everything, right? In conclusion, um, actually, let me just go through this very quickly. Uh, some of the statements that some people said, this is a final statement. Someone said, uh, some people who were like had questions about hijab. They said, in the West, the hijab just makes me stand out more. So some people say, oh, just if I wear the hijab, it just makes me stand out more. Everyone looks at me and stuff like that. But what I say, it's okay for you to buy a very expensive handbag, wouldn't it? You know, that stands people out. You know, when you, wear, when you buy a very expensive handbag, it makes, it makes uh, people stand out. That's okay. But if someone wears the hijab, which is, an, which is a command by God, to protect you and not anyone else to, to protect you and it's the clothing of beautification to Allah, then, then it becomes a problem, right? So we've got to put things into, into I can't take questions because I'm late, into perspective. So summary, 
is that hijab is for both men and women. How we wear the hijab is this difference between men and women. And by the way, you guys, I'm pretty sure, I'm, I say this as a personal statement, right? Pretty sure by wearing that hijab, I know sometimes it's hot, I know sometimes it's difficult, but by wearing this, it's your own jihad. You know, the, the jihad that you have inside you, the jihad al nafs, the inner struggle, right? And if you succeed with that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and I'm sure he is now extremely proud of all of you because what you're doing, of course, no one says it's easy, but it's actually something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is extremely, extremely proud of because it actually will protect your heart and purify your heart, purify your heart. And importantly, the boys, right? Try not to take over, take off your, your shirt, uh, lower your gaze and cover your private parts because again, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be immensely proud of you when you actually show the identity, the identity of actually being the, the, the servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay, so inshallah tomorrow uh, we will continue uh, with our series inshallah and uh, I would love to see you inshallah. If you have any questions, what I will do is uh, you can write it down and, and bring it up to me uh, or you can come and speak to me right after this. Okay? Sallu ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Allah.